What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Level 1 Gaming YouTube channel. My name is Logan, and this is your one-stop shop for all gaming news, reviews, podcasts, whatever you want it. Our YouTube channel is a one-stop shop for it all. So if you are liking what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like the video. And we're going to take it to a review of Evil West. We're going to review Evil West today. If you guys are unfamiliar with what Evil West is, or if you've been you know on the fence of it this is our review for it so evil west is done by the developers flying wild hog they're the guys that's most notoriously known for um like franchises like shadow warrior so they did shadow warrior one two and three three came out earlier this year i want to say back in may and then also trek to yumi came out two earlier this year two games that came out and then this is their third newest one of the franchise and as they like to call it this is a um, what they've done with Evil West is that they did a take of an upper underrepresented genre, um, which is what they call the Weird West. So Evil West is a third person action adventure video game set in a twisted, never before seen fantasy version of the Old West. Uh, you play as uh, the main character that you play as is his name is Jesse Retner. Um, he is son to William Retner. They are you know part of the retner institute which is a whole group of uh vampire hunters monster hunters it's a long line long lineage of these hunters that have just tr gone on and on and on and basically their entire goal is to eradicate vampires completely um they use a whole bunch of different types of advanced technology to fight their foes and there's just a whole bunch of agents that set it all in motion to kind of help take it out when I got your goddamn gilded invitation, I expected champagne and canapes. Instead, some fang fuck broke into your headquarters and slapped you all around like a gaggle of whimpering sissies. Now the entire country is left unprotected while I stand here with my dick in my hand like an idiot. So again, could someone please tell me how the fuck did this happen? Secure so, like I've already set the premise, you are playing as uh, essentially Monster Hunter. Think kind of Val, uh, Val Helsing, um, just not Val Helsing. You know, you have different types of monsters. You got vampires, spiders, all kinds of different things that kind of go bump at the night. And so that's essentially this whole entire game is you playing as Jesse Reitner. Um, trying to eradicate the vampire threat, right? There's big, big bad vampires, and they're coming down on your your institute, um, trying to plague and uh, more or so less, you know, infect the U.S. and kind of cause you know mass chaos across the country. So you take on the role as Jesse Retner. You set out to stop this threat, and that's kind of like where the story takes off. Um, so when I look at Evil West. Um, one of the big things that I felt about Evil West was that it was kind of a, uh, I'm trying to think a, how to describe it, a double A game trapped in a, or trying to masquerade itself, I guess, as a triple A game. Um, it does have very much uh, the feeling that kind of one of the things I got when I was playing with, playing through the game. Uh, I spent, I think, 18 hours into the game entirely. Uh, got it from beginning to end, completed it, did it on the evil difficulty. And one of the things I felt the most was kind of how outdated Evil West felt. When I really look at its gameplay design, um, its mission structures, how the levels are kind of laid out, it felt kind of very outdated. It kind of felt like I was playing a more like 360 PS3 kind of era in the scope of the game. Um, this didn't really feel like a 2022 game. It didn't feel like it was really harnessing the power of the Series X. That's the, the system that I played it on. Um, and I know on the PlayStation 5, it has the same type of performance across both of those consoles. And then, you know, it kind of goes down from there when you look at past generation of consoles for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4. Even the Series S runs at a lower uh, resolution, frame rate, stuff like that. And so I really felt just when I was playing it, that this game was kind of stuck in it and there was really no... Um, advancements in terms of the technology that they use um, the level designs and they didn't really harness any of the power of the new consoles new generation um, other than obviously you'll notice faster loading times and of course 
the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 do hit a target of 60 frames a second, which that's one thing I will note. Um, the game did run really well. Um, outside of the fact that it was running at a 1080p resolution, the game itself was pretty much a solid 60 FPS. I did not notice myself relatively any dips, you know, really that were kind of like bothered me caught that I could kind of note. It was actually at a pretty, pretty smooth experience. Um, and so I will give the devs credit for that. They did have a game that, you know, run really good, but I do believe that we probably should have seen at least a better resolution because that was kind of one of my gripes about the game was that the lack of quality in, how would I say, the game's presentation, the game's graphics, you know, some parts of the game looked really good, really clean, the details, the world environments and stuff like that looked really, really good, but then there was other areas that looked very muddied, very watered down, very lack of detail. Even when you look at like your your baseline enemies kind of seemed like they were missing textures and stuff. And I don't really know if that's a, since we only played on Xbox Series X and it was at a, a 1080p resolution, I don't know if that's any indicated of that low of a resolution for the game or if that was a fact that a lot of that stuff was just kind of missing. Um, especially in more of, I would say it kind of had some levels along the line that were, if you look at like early, um, 360 PS3 days and you kind of know that tone, that Brown, that gray, um, kind of S game. Uh, I got a lot of feeling from that from evil West, but then there is a lot of areas where evil West does shine. And it was just kind of jarring to see that difference. Cause I'd be like on one hand, I'm like, wow, this is actually a really good looking game. And then the next level, I'm like, wow, this game does not look that great. Um, what happened here with the level design? Where did that quality go from this level to this level? Where, where did it get missing or where did it go missing? Um, from a gameplay perspective though, from actually like the combat, um, I very much enjoyed Evil West combat. I thought their combat was one of their highlights um, from the way that you fought the enemies and your upgrades. Uh, you had a lot at your disposal. You start out kind of like your basic, hey, I got my fists, I got a revolver, I got a rifle. That's your basic, you know, three things that you start out with. And then as you progress through the story, you get a whole bunch of other stuff unlocked from, from grenades to a shotgun to... Uh, your abilities that you can use with your your fists, right? Your fist is basically your main uh, feature. That's where you have uh, you have a, you know, a, a garment, or I'm trying to think of the word for it, but you have like a garment, basically something on your fist that uh, helps deal shockingly awesome blows towards your enemies, and you can upgrade basically any every single thing um, to make it more powerful, to add certain electric effects to like your weapons, your pistol, your um, your your revolver, your rifle, so on and so forth, your shotgun. You can add things to cut down, you know, the, the cooldown time for, you know, your shotgun. You can get that down. And so I did like the combat. The combat did feel really good. Um, the only gripe that I had about the combat with Evil West is that it's tied to um, arena specific areas. So as you're going through the level, there's only certain combat sections throughout the game. So you'll have like your exploration area and you'll explore and do little puzzles and knock down certain things to get from point A to point B. And then boom, at the next time you have essentially your combat areas right there. And the one thing that really, really threw me out of, wow, this game felt very outdated is like, I could see enemies, right? I could see them on the other side of this little thing that I had to vault, but I could not damage them with my rifle. I couldn't damage them with my pistol. Um, a big red X would come across, you know, the enemy saying that I could not do damage to them. And I, and that really threw me out of the experience. Um, and that really took me back to, wow, this, this is how outdated, um, this gameplay's design is because I can't injure or take on enemies unless the game tells me I can. Um, there is one section I will say that kind of was like a big open point A to point B section with other enemies kind of scattered. There was one of those sections in the game, but other than that, everything was segmented to, I can only fight enemies here. And it would be from a small arena, medium arena, large scale arena. So there was, you know, kind of different scopes to enemy combats. So your small areas was just like a couple enemies with maybe a little smaller, you know, bigger enemies that you would fight in kind of a couple ways. Cause there is a limit to how many enemies is in each section, which again, I felt that that was a little outdated because you basically just had to 
kill enemies till they stop spawning. Um, and then your larger kind of scale arenas would usually throw um, X amount of mini bosses, whether it be one, two, three, four, five <laughs> mini bosses at you or more. <laughs> And they would then, you know, also then not only do you have like these mini bosses that you have to um, constantly fight, but you also have the smaller little main enemies that you come across through the entire game that are also in this arena as well. And sometimes combat scenarios can get frustrating. Um, I know especially my one big gripe was the unbalancing with the boss fights. Um, since I did play on the, the evil difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty you can play on, um, some of the boss fights kind of felt more frustrating because, yes, you have your, hey, I'm going to learn the techniques, right? So it wasn't, I never necessarily had issues with fighting a boss because I could learn, you know, their pattern and be able to dodge and counter those moves. But then they would always throw um, countless, countless enemies outside of just your normal boss and i always feel that that's kind of like a a good indicator that the boss actually isn't very well designed if you have to throw multiple enemies you know kind of to pad that fight out and make the player kind of struggle even more because the bosses on evil evil difficulty um can take you out pretty quick i mean there's you have very little room for error and so it was kind of unfortunate that i was that frustrated with the bosses um but that's not like anything really um other than outside of the knock on the game is that i wish it kind of would have maybe balanced it out a little bit maybe did a little bit more play testing uh when they kind of designed the boss sections of the game um so like i said the combat is actually really good um, the exploration, because like while the levels are linear in design, there is avenues in areas that you can go and find because your your upgrade currencies, right, is you got to find money. Um, money scattered throughout every single level. Um, there's just pouches of money laying around. Then there's also um, kind of like a mini chest of money, you know, and you kind of do the, the Kratos punch on it, break it, and money comes spewing out and you collect it. And then you have like your big chest of money, which give you like the most money um, that you can get. And so money is your, basically your equivalent to buying your upgrades. Uh, there's also chests that you can find that then will let you unlock upgrades, you know, cause you do kind of have um, a level, you know, as you're fighting enemies, you do get experience, but the game doesn't really um, show that off very well that you get in that. It's just, you'll get the little notification pops up says, Hey, I'm level 20, right? And you get unlocked perks for your player upgrades for that. So they do have that kind of system in there too. And it does, you know, encourage you to go explore around the levels, kind of help find money, find chests, to unlock certain perks and stuff of that nature. But the level design is pretty linear uh, when you come to it. It's pretty much your, your, hey, I'm at point A and I'm getting to point B and there's maybe a path here and a path here, but eventually I'm gonna to come to an end where I gotta then go back and backtrack to get on track for completing the, the whole main mission itself. Um, so like that kind of, you know, felt like a, you know, more kind of an older game design with the levels being that linear. Now, mind you, I'm, I enjoy linear games. So that was kind of another thing that I did really like about it um, was that it wasn't a big open world with tons of, uh, junk filled into it, right? You got to the point, you went to point A, point B. But some of the fights, I think, along the way in that journey were kind of a little bit um, redundant. Uh, you were, you know, you do a little bit of exploration, and boom, here's this combat section, and a little bit of exploration, boom, here's this combat section. And some of the times, the difficulty scale in those arenas just would spike way up. Like I said, there was. Uh, I think there was one time I was the most frustrated I got was I kind of had like five mi five mini bosses that would spawn and there's these um, these mini bosses that have like spiders on their back of them that shoot webs and the webs basically slow you down so I had like three or four of them at one time uh, shooting the webs on the ground <laughs> and it was very frustrating because my character could barely move and uh, so like that I wasn't a big fan of there. Um, when I look at, uh, the story wise of the game, um, the story, I, I, I know I'm, I'm pausing on there cause I'm just, 
so I guess a game that touted itself is like, you know, man versus vampires. I was hoping to have a little bit more of like a Dracula kind of esque uh, story. Um, I was hoping that there'd be more vampires in it for sure. Um, but there, there really wasn't. It felt like he was more along the lines like your biggest threat was the base enemies that you had to fight, which weren't vampires. They more looked like um, a just a 3D model with some type of deformities on it that would just kind of do basic swing attacks. And then there was like some that had like leeches on them. And there was this one, this one that had like a cage on its head. It was just literally a 3D model. Kind of looked like a person with a cage on its head that would just constantly shoot out these, these little explodey yellow balls that would come up to you and just completely would destroy you. And so um, the enemy design I felt like was really, really lacking in that department, especially when you looked at, you know, kind of like the promo for this game kind of seemed like it was very much, you know, the West versus vampires, right? Um, I could have, I would have liked to have seen a lot more vampires definitely in this game. Um, I wish they would have been more of the forefront to like the enemies that you fought and maybe they could have done some more unique designs there. Um, and then you had like your three to four main bosses, which each one's had um, their own little systems that you had to kind of learn to defeat. And so like I like the main the main bosses other than outside of the fact that I felt like the difficulty scale was a little bit unbalanced. Right. Um, I did overall like the bosses. I like their their designs and stuff. I thought they were the most unique parts of the game. Um, it's just there was the balancing is what I had the issue when it came to the boss fights, but going back to the story, um, the story at the end of it, I, I honestly, I, <laughs> I honestly, at the end of beating evil West, I really did not care about the story. Um, at the very beginning of the game, it doesn't really give you any type of buildup. It just kind of throws you in. You don't really get to, um, you know, kind of learn, more about the institute you don't get to kind of learn more about the enemies that you're fighting uh you just kind of get thrown into it you get told hey we're going to go take out these vampires and take out these monsters and that's sort of it um obviously there is some story bits in there to break up essentially that big picture right which is monster hunters versus vampires and there is little bits here and there, and I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that does want to play the game that it's interested in playing it. Um, but the story bits and the hits really weren't there for me. Um, there was no impact to them uh, when certain things happened. The game ended up getting pretty predictable by the end, where you kind of already knew where we were going, actually from the very beginning of the game to where the end was. So at the end, there was really no surprise when it was supposed to be kind of, oh, this big thing kind of happened. And so the story itself was very forgettable to me. I didn't really feel like upon beating Evil West that I really left um, feeling fulfilled, feeling like I accomplished something other than, hey, I got a check mark, I beat this game. Um, so I was a little upset with how the story was put out there. Uh, also, just a note for this review, this game does have co-op. You can play the game from beginning to end in co-op with a buddy, but for the purpose of this review, I did want to note uh, that I did not play the game in co-op. I am unable. So the reason being is you have to have another friend that's playing the game too. Um, there is no type of buddy pass like you could see with, I believe it was Ghost Recon Breakpoint where you could give a buddy a pass to play the game with you. Um, we did not receive anything like that with the code. Um, all we got was just a baseline of the code for the game and I had nobody else to play with. <laughs> so I did not get to uh, beat or even try out the co-op mode. Um, I wish they kind of would have added some type of matchmaking system where uh, some part, some one person could have hosted a game, another person could have searched for a game because I think that would have gave me a good opportunity to try that mode out and see if it runs really well. Um, but unfortunately, I was not able to do co-op. Um, other than that, though, like I said, I spent 19 hours in the Evil West. I slayed tons of hordes, monsters, leveled up Jesse. 
I think I got him up to 21. I don't know what the max level is to get him to, but I did get to the game's conclusion on evil difficulty. I got 21 out of the 29 achievements too along the way. And the game was obviously we got the recoup review code from the publisher. But my overall score, if I had to score um, Evil West, is it's a 6.8 out of 10. Um, like I said, it had a lot of good ideas, and I just wish things would have been executed a little bit better. Um, I think they would have spent a little bit more time flushing out the story and maybe doing some testing with the boss fights and maybe a little bit of a better enemy design and more um, control over level design and quality of the presentation of the levels and how they're presented i think they would have had a lot more of a stellar game um but right now i'm just kind of sitting at the it's not the worst game that i've ever played but it's definitely not a must play in my eye if i had to go and tell anybody yes you have to go play evil west it would just be kind of a lie and i just really wish because i was looking forward to evil west so i'm actually sad that this didn't turn out to be like the big new IP game that I was hoping that we'd see because I do like flying wild hogs, uh, other titles. Like I love, love the Trek to Yomi. I love the shadow warrior series. I actually played through um, all of them this year, getting prepped for shadow warrior three. And so I was expecting, I guess a little bit more out of evil West um, than, than what we got. So with that said, 6.8 out of 10 is my final verdict for this game um that's all i got for you guys so thank you for tuning in to level one gaming to listen to the review for evil west if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button it means a lot to us we are a small you know bunch of group of georgia's gamers making content for gamers right and it would mean a lot to us if you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to leave a comment down below if you guys already played evil west What's your thoughts on it? You know, let us know if you agree, disagree. I love to hear what other people like to think about the game. And that's it. Peace.